Hello and welcome back to another part in my series of videos where I'm going to show you how to make the very most of your Synology NAS with DSM-7. Now in previous videos I have talked to you guys about setting up a mapped network drive. For those of you that aren't aware, a mapped network drive is a folder on your NAS that you can see the, net the network attached storage storage like this. It allows you to interact with it on kind of a similar file folder level to what you're used to. You can access the folders and the content and navigate the contents of that NAS. However, map network drives are by no means the best and most optimal way in which you can interact with a NAS. There's lots of reasons for this, ranging from the fact that some proprietary applications, be they for photo editing, video, um, video editing, even some basic level applications, aren't able to interact with map network drives in the same way that they can interact with the likes of your local OS drive or a drive that's connected via SATA. Now the answer to this is creating something called a LUN, an L-U-N, and a LUN is an area of storage on the NAS that is visible and has the appearance of localized storage on your client hardware. It also allows a greater degree of access and control and utility with the software on your system. Now, on today's video, I'm going to be utilizing this Synology NAS, a DS920 Plus, and I'm going to be utilizing DSM-7. I'm also going to be using the new SAN Manager, which is a rebranding and overhauled and improved version of the iSCSI manager for DSM 7.6.2. Uh, sorry, DSM 6.2. So a lot of the steps in today's video are still appropriate to DSM 6.2. Also, if you're going to be using a Windows PC, I recommend utilizing a tool known as iSCSI Initiator, something that will become clearer later in the video why we're using it. If we head back onto the user interface here, we can see all of our options. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need to select the option LUN. We are going to create a target during this. Now, for those that aren't aware, whenever you hear the word um, iSCSI being thrown around in modern storage terms, two words get thrown around. That is target and LUN. Now, a target is the direct point in which your storage can be reached, and the LUN is the area of storage. There's more to it than that, but that's the easiest way to explain. So, in order to create our LUN, we can go ahead and click Create. Along the way, we will also create a target. Select Create. First, give your LUN a name. I'm going to call this one DSM-7 LUN. We can give it a description if we choose, but we also have to say where on the NAS it will reside in terms of the volumes you've created. Then you have to give it an area of storage. Now this is going to be really important, because not only are we talking about how big this area of storage will be, and remember, you're going to be utilizing space that already exists as a volume on your NAS, but in a moment we're going to talk about provisioning where storage is important. So say for example, we're going to give this LUN 100 gigabytes. It's worth highlighting that after this, we'll be asked if we want to use thick or thin provisioning. Now, as you can see, as indicated by Synology themselves, a thick provisioning area has better performance, whereas thin provisioning doesn't have the same level of performance. But the difference is that thick provisioning is where if you select 100 gigabytes, this LUN will immediately take 100 gigabytes from the system. It's trickier to expand and ultimately is a more fixed level of storage, which is great for predictability and performance, but less good if you want to increase the storage later. Alternatively, if you select thin provisioning, even though we put 100 gigs, it is flexible in its approach. You can change the amount of storage and also storage will only be allocated how and when it's used. For me, I'm gonna go thick provisioning for performance, but Bear in mind that different settings may be useful to you, and there's a lot more to thick and thin provisioning than that simple overview I gave you. Next up, click Next. From here, you have to choose which target you're going to utilize. Now, if you haven't created a target yet, an automatic one will be generated, but if you have created alternative targets so you can separate all of your areas of storage and the connections, you can create new ones. If you have ad additional cards that have been added, such as fiber channel cards or even other improved network interface cards, they will also appear and you can choose between them. After that, click next and say who can access it. Do you want to make sure that all people can access it or only certain default users? Again, you can configure those quite easily. 
And there you go, we're about to confirm our settings. Click done when you're ready. And the area of storage for our LUN will be created, as well as the default iSCSI target being created. And there you go, we've created our iSCSI target and we've created our LUN. If we want, we can create a brand new LUN by cloning what we've got there or creating a brand new one. We can delete this LUN for a new one if we choose or select edit if we want to change the level of storage, an option that's open to us because of the provisioning we may or may not have selected based on how we go for it. And after that, we can add lots of zeros if we choose if there's the available storage on the NAS and again, as mentioned, it is heavily dependent and its flexibility is heavily dependent on the storage area available, as well as the permissions, who can access it and more, all of which can be configured on the fly. Now we've done that, we have to make our way over to the other area of storage using the iSCSI initiator. Real quick though, let's go ahead and create another area of storage, this one of 200 gigabytes, and this one is going to use thin provisioning, and we'll call this one LUN thin, so we can have a little look how they both compare. Click next, utilize the same target as before, allow all users to access it and click done. And there you go, we've now created a second LUN, but this second LUN is thin provisioned. So we can have a little look at those settings if we choose, and as if we go in, we can edit the LUN, and as you can see, on this one we can change the capacity, but it won't matter because we can actually create flexible provisioning quite easily. And there you go, it's all set up the way we want it to be. And again, we've got all the options for cloning and more along the top of the screen. So now on our desktop computer, we open up the iSCSI target. Now on your iSCSI target, all of this stuff here on screen will not be visible. All of this stuff as you see is from previous LUNs that I've utilized. So for you, head up to the discovery tab. From here, click Discover Portal. Then enter the IP of your NAS as shown in the web browser. Again, there are other means of accessing an iSCSI LUN, and again, it will differ and um, be reflective of the way you have set up your NAS. But otherwise, connecting directly to the IP, ensuring that the NAS and the PC you're utilizing on the same network will help. Again, click Advanced if you want to enable other settings, such as the IP. Do you want to use certain adapters on your machine, targeting the IP directly? Or are you going to enable CHAPS, which is a form of uh, password and authorization protection on there if it's already enabled within the NAS? Apart from that, we can go ahead and click OK and confirm the settings we've made here so far. Now we've added that search target we can head back into the targets list, and as you can see, the 920 has now got an available target. Remember, this isn't the storage area, this is the target, the portal to access it. So select that one that's listed as visible but inactive, scroll to the bottom, and select connect. If you want to create a multipath connection so as multiple people can communicate, tick that box and click OK. As you can see, we've now connected to the iSCSI target. The next thing we need to do is head into the storage manager of the PC. Now you can do this from the control panel. Alternatively, head to the My PC or My Computer icon and go to the top under the Computer tab and select Manage. In the next window, it will open up with administrative tools in the Computer Management panel. From there, double-click Storage, then into Disk Management, and then from there you can see that the system has now identified two new connected areas that can be added as logical drives. In other words, drives that can be seen with the visibility of a local connected drive. As you can see, we've selected GPT. Do not select the MBR option as this is designed for your operating system. And by selecting that, it can screw up how you can connect with the machine. But for now, click OK and it will add these two drives. So now they're visible. As you can see, there's our first and second drive readily available. Go ahead and right click them and select new simple volume. Or if you want to take advantage of spanning volumes or connected volumes for redundancy and protection, you can use the other options. But for now, we'll create a new shared volume. Go ahead, select an option. In this case, I'm gonna go for the letter R for no reason. We can name this if we choose. We'll call this one thick. Click next, 
and boom, it's allowing it to be added and it will be available shortly as a visible area. And again, we can right click the next one, repeat the same steps, give it a name, we're going for drive E, we'll call this one thin for the hell of it, click next and finish, and it will shortly add this area of storage to your local PC. As you can see, it's now seen them, and now when we head in, not only do we have our C drive and the other connected drive I've got via SATA, but now both of the iSCSI LUNs are visible on our local computer and we can interact with the NAS with most of the software that would not have been able to see these mapped network drives. Remember, in my DSM series in part one, I showed you how to map a network drive utilizing the Synology Assistant tool, finding the NAS on your local area network, finding the NAS, right clicking the NAS once the system has finished searching and from there mapping a network drive. As useful as this can be, it's still not as good as utilizing an iSCSI target which has inherent performance extras on them. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do chuck me a like and of course click subscribe for further videos. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next part in this series on DSM-7.